Hey everybody and good morning. I am here at Taylor Lake, just east of Crested Butte, Colorado. And today I want to chat about the Wahoo Element Roam. And I've been using the Wahoo Element Roam for roughly a year now, just shy of a year actually. And I've been using it obviously for most of my day rides, but also for bike packing trips. And in this review, I am going to kind of detail why I think it's a good bike packing computer, but what I'd like to also see Wahoo do in the future to make it even more bike packer friendly. The cool thing about Wahoo is Wahoo is a cycling specific brand. Uh, they make everything from cycling trainers to bike computers. Uh, the Wahoo Element Roam is the high-end cycling computer in their lineup. So it does come in at a steep price point of 380, but it is loaded with features. So the dimensions of the cycling computer are 3.5 by 2.3 by 0 0.7. The funny thing about this unit is I thought it was huge when I initially got it. But now that I've seen all of these other cycling computers that are much larger than this, uh, I, I really do like the size of the computer. While I still think it could be a little bit larger for on-display navigation, uh, I think it's a great size, especially uh, when you're trying to fit everything in your cockpit for a bikepacking trip. The rechargeable unit comes with a 2.7 inch Gorilla Glass screen. Uh, so it's pretty darn bulletproof. That being said, my partner ended up getting a Wahoo Element Roam at the same time that I did. And it actually ended up getting a sunspot on a 90 degree day with bright sun in Minnesota. And we had to reach out to customer service. They were super helpful and we're now in the process of replacing her unit. The display itself is super easy on the eyes. It's a colored display. While it's not a ton of color in your face, uh, it's color where it needs to be. Roads, lakes, specific things that you see on a map are colored, but the whole unit itself isn't colored. The unit comes with six buttons. You've got an on and off switch on the left side, three buttons at the bottom, and then you also have two zoom buttons on the right side. The on and off switch and zoom buttons are really easy to use. However, the three buttons on the bottom are kind of indented a little bit into the unit. So they are a little bit more challenging to press down. You almost have to put your nail into the unit or at least click right in the middle of the button. Not the end of the world, it's just something that I think uh, should be changed down the road. The unit also comes with LEDs, both on the left side of the unit and the top. And this is really nice, not only to aid in training, uh, say if you want to stay at a certain cadence or a certain power when you're uh, putting in an interval, but it also will remind you and show you exactly what direction to go when you upload a route on your unit uh, and you hit an intersection. You can turn the LEDs off if you want, and I've done that in the past, just to save some, uh, some extra battery if I'm trying to eke out all the battery I can possibly get. So the Wahoo Element Roam is in the bikepacking conversation because it comes with integrated maps. So throughout the whole world, you can get maps from anywhere from Europe to South America to Africa, Australia, uh, the United States, Canada, Mexico. It's also awesome because it comes with turn-by-turn -turn navigation. First impressions often don't lie and my first impression when setting up the Element Roam was wow. Mainly because it's just so easy and intuitive to pair with your phone. You will need the Wahoo Element Roam companion app uh, but that companion app can basically control everything on this computer. To set up your device, a QR code will pop up on the device itself and you'll just use your phone to snap a photo of that QR code and then your device is paired, easy peasy. The only downside that we've heard, uh, Logan actually has an iPhone 6, which is an older iPhone and it doesn't pair as well with the Wahoo Element Roam. That being said, I have a iPhone XS and I've had zero issues with pairing the two devices. So just chatting about the companion app a little bit. So the most useful page on the Element Roam companion app is settings. And the settings will allow you to adjust the black light, uh, auto shutdown when you stop a ride, 
uh, will be able to pair any of your sensors, which is incredibly easy to do. Uh, all you have to do is set up sensors and uh, have your sensor close by, and almost always it will pick up that sensor, which is great. Uh, personally, I have a number of different sensors hooked up. I have a power meter on one of my bikes. I have two heart rate monitors. I have DI2 on my uh, cutthroat, and then I have uh, the access on my mountain bike. It also comes with live tracking and maps, which is something I don't use, but you can share your location with folks. It will show where you are on your route, which can be a very nice feature. And then uh, it allows you to manage your maps. So it'll allow you to download the maps of your region and be able to kind of see the roads around you and whatnot. There isn't uh, any topography at all, which is kind of a bummer. That's something that I really like to see on a cycling computer. Another really awesome feature of using the companion app is being able to update all of your pages. You can update any of your pages, add pages on the fly. You don't need any internet or service in general. All you need is Bluetooth uh, and being able to update a page or a category on your page uh, is really neat. So you can have 11 data screens per page, which is a ton. And being able to toggle the zoom in and zoom out will on the fly be able to reduce or increase those data fields. The cycling computer also comes with Strava segments where you can follow a Strava segment and see how you stack up against uh, everyone else among that segment. I messed around with it briefly, but I don't really follow segments so much, so they don't really pop up all that often. For day rides, all I have to do is turn the device on and then press start. A few instances I have had to restart the device because it would not pick up the GPS. Uh, it hasn't really happened recently, so it might have been resolved with a device update. Another really neat feature is uh, you can pair this device with Training Peaks or any training software that you use. And if you have a specific training regiment for that day, it will automatically pop up and it will ask you if you want to proceed with that specific workout. This has been an incredibly useful training tool for me, not only just because it pairs with Training Peaks, but it has a ton of customized data fields to kind of suit my needs and desires. So when I'm finished with my ride, all I have to do is press the stop button and it will complete the ride. The neat thing about the Wahoo Element Roam is that it automatically uploads to Komoot, Ride with GPS, Strava, Training Peaks, if you are within uh, your Wi-Fi range. If you are on a road trip or something like that where you're not in Wi-Fi, you will need to manually upload it through the companion app, but it's super easy to do. All right, so enough about that. What we wanna learn is why is this good for bikepacking, right? So the neat thing about it is it pairs with all of these apps and you can build a route on your phone or on your computer and then go to the companion app and load it up right away, super easy. So what I typically do is use Ride with GPS and I'll either make a desktop route or I'll use my phone and make a route on my phone. And it's super easy. All you have to do is go to the app and pair Ride with GPS, Komoot, whatever app that you make routes on. And then all of the future routes that you make will be readily available on the Wahoo Companion app. So the best way I can explain this is I will show you how to do that once I get packed up here and we'll get on our way. Going over some notable bikepacking thoughts on the Wahoo Element Roam. The downside to this device is it uses a micro USB recharge cable to charge the device. So Wahoo says that you can actually get 17 hours of ride time on the device. Uh, and that is true. And I've actually eked out almost 20 hours using just basic settings. You can use the device while it's plugged in. So say you uh, wanna use a Dynamo Hub and charge the device, uh, it will work all day with it plugged in, which is super unique. I have a cache battery, and sometimes if I'm running low on um, my bike packing trip, I'll just plug in the, uh, the cord into the cache battery and then into the unit. Uh, and it will charge. And then rerouting, I noticed, also kind of makes the computer think a little bit. If you're off route, it gives you a suggested reroute. And it did this yesterday when I was coming down. There was two roads that I could come down 
Uh, and I was going down the one that I did not have on my route just because it looked like it was more direct. And it was more direct, but it suggested, and then it also reminded me that I was off route. One thing that you can do is actually turn off the reminder or you can mute the reminder, uh, which is something that I do all the time, especially if I'm in a thick canopy of trees. Uh, another feature on the device is get me to the start, which is a suggested route to get to the start of your specific route that you've built. That's something that I rarely use, but is available and if you're looking to get to a route without having to say go on a major road wahoo will suggest that which is pretty neat i would really like to see a more detailed map so i'd love to see some topography maybe a few more features around me it is a super basic map uh, but it does typically have every single road that you would travel on. It has water sources, which is super important when you're looking for water. It gets the job done, but it could be better. And like I mentioned before, I think I could actually use a larger screen. It's not a touch screen, and I like that the fact that it's not a touch screen, but having the screen itself a little bit wider through the edge, almost like how the iPhone uh, has evolved, would be something that I would definitely be okay with. And then I've had a few glitches within the device uh, and I was on a bike packing trip in the upper peninsula of Michigan in June and the device basically just kind of froze up on me. I couldn't switch pages, I couldn't turn it on and off. So what I ended up doing was doing kind of a hard reset on the device by pressing the power and the middle button and basically from there, I was able to restart my device and all of the data, my ride, it all popped back up. It was smarter than I thought it was, which is something that uh, I haven't had good luck with with other computers before. All right, so I am going to just show you how to upload a route now. So basically, I'm going to show you my Ride with GPS route that I created. So Ride with GPS is an awesome resource, mainly because uh, you can create a route on the fly using uh, the route planner, but I like to create many of my routes on desktop. And so to do that, uh, you just obviously go on your desktop and sign into your Ride With GPS account and then save it, and then it will be popped up in your library. So for this instance, this is called Pearl Taylor Loop. So I'll click on that, and that is my route for this overnighter that I'm on. So we want this route on the Wahoo. So first things first, we are going to turn on the device. So it took 35 seconds to boot. So we'll wanna set that down and then we'll wanna to go to our companion app and we'll do that by going to Wahoo Element Companion app right here. First, it's going to pair with your device. And as you see here, it looks like we're connected. We've got 70%. We also, are looking for updates, which is kind of cool. I know that we're out of service right now, but Wahoo has updates very frequently, so I always update uh, my device. And then uh, this is the pages uh, screen where you can customize pages. But for this instance, what we're gonna wanna do is go to workouts, which is in the bottom left corner here. Click that, and then we're gonna choose root. So uh, it's also right now, this screen is showing that I have a heart rate monitor on, but all of my other sensors are not paired and that's accurate. So we'll go choose root. And now you can basically import root, import files, sync from web, which is what I do almost all the time. They almost always just pop up right here. So uh, if you want, you can sort from A to Z, which is great. So this one's called, uh, it's a hashtag, so that one's first. Um, or length, so this one's 2.2 miles. So what we wanna find is the date. And so the date I created this loop. So I actually created a uh, Pearl Taylor loop, which is right here, and we'll click on that. And then from there, you've got the Pearl Taylor loop here. It's going in one direction. You can switch the directions by toggling that button right there. And you can go backwards. But what we want to do is go in the direction that I have it, and then it shows at the bottom a nice elevation plot. So what we're going to do is press Select, which is in the top right corner right here. And now it's syncing. Basically, it just said, would you like to route to start? I want to press no because I'm in the middle of my route. If I was in the beginning of my route or at the start of my route, I might, might consider pressing yes to get to the start. But if I press route to start, it's going to route me to 
the beginning of the root, which I do not want, which is in Crested Butte. So I'm at the middle point of the root, so I'm gonna press no. I will press page until I get to the map, which is right here. And basically, if I zoom out, you'll see part of the root right down here. Now, just because of my orientation, it's not showing all of the root, and I'm actually off route right now because I'm uh, at my campsite, which is maybe two, 300 yards off route. So let's get going and, um, and I'll show you kind of how it reacts once I get on route. So this is a good example. So I found the route, but because my route isn't entirely on the road, uh, when I created it, Ride with GPS didn't recognize this road. It's putting me on a suggested route. You could see the grayed out version right below that blue portion is the route I have, but the, the road I'm on. So Wahoo recognizes the road, but Ride with GPS didn't. So that's pretty cool. So when it's suggested or you get to the start, it's a blue arrow indicator. When you're on the route that you created, it's a black arrow indicator. Uh, and you can kind of see those arrows telling you which direction to go. And then when you've traveled through that area, it's a dark black. And then uh, when you haven't traveled through that area yet, but it's the route that you've created, it's the grayed out version. So is the Wahoo Element Roam a bike packing bike computer. Absolutely. It's got integrated maps. It's got turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Uh, the user experience is incredible. That being said, the battery life is not terrible, but it is also a concern. I would love to see this device have three AAA batteries or two AAA batteries, and maybe down the road we'll see a device from Wahoo like that. Would I use it for a race like the Tour Divide? I don't think so. I know Lael Wilcox does, and she has two of these. I just don't want to have to deal with charging it almost daily. That being said, this computer works perfectly for casual bikepacking trips. Overnighters, it's going to work just fine for this trip. I'm not going to have to charge it over the two days that I'm riding, and if it was a three-day trip, I probably wouldn't have to charge it. Being able to pair the device with any of the sensors that you're using, being able to upload routes that you've made just with ease and then just using the companion app for changing pages and data fields is incredibly easy and that's something that i can't say on other cycling computers so thank you so much for tuning in today uh, if you have any comments or questions put them in the comment section below i'll definitely get back to you and if you like what you see here please hit that subscribe button thank you so much for watching and you know what to do pedal further <laughs>